Hey everybody, welcome back to the hangar deck. Uh, I know it's been a, a minute uh, since I've done a video, but uh, I've been fairly busy at work and um, did finally get a finishing touch on a build that I wanted to uh, show you today. And um, you may be thinking, I think I've seen this video before, but you actually haven't. Um, I posted a similar video to what I'm going to do uh, today, but for some reason the audio was really weird. So I went ahead and deleted it and I just decided I'd do the video again. Hopefully this one turns out well. Anyway, um, I built a KI-84 um, from Tamiya. It's a 148 scale, and when I started this build, from the time I started it, I knew I wanted to do something a little bit different than what I normally do. So I did a flying diorama, and as I built this diorama, it sort of took on a life of its own. And, you know, I had an idea in my head, and as I worked on it, a story kind of popped up. And as with any good diorama, I guess, it tells a story. So the story of this particular diorama is um, this KI-84, which was a um, Japanese army fighter, was defending its homeland against uh, the invading B-29s. It was a fairly uh, good, high-performance, high-altitude fighter for the Japanese. And it went up to attack these B-29s, and it had the misfortune of flying through the, um, uh, the bullet stream from a gunner's position on a B-29. So all of this story, it didn't start out that way, but... It, as I, as I worked on this model, this story developed. And so I'm going to turn the camera around now to where you can see the model. And this is the model. And as you can see, it is flying. And it is on a base, a painted silver base. It's not a silver base with a Japanese flag. Now that, you'll notice that the ball, the rising sun, is in the center of the flag. That means that is a Japanese Imperial Army flag. If the flag was offset to the left, it would be a Japanese Imperial Navy flag. So that's how you tell the difference, if you ever wanted to know. So as you can see, this plane is in flight. I made a little disc for the propeller. And um, it is in flight, it has been hit, it's belching smoke and fire from the, uh, from the wing. This plane is doomed. And as you can possibly see, the pilot is looking down at the wing and he realizes that he is in trouble. He's right now, as we speak, trying to evaluate how much control he's going to have on this plane. And this is the initial fireball here, and this is more fire coming out of the wing. And before we know it, this white area, which is the fuel, is going to ignite, and this plane is going to be doomed. Um, this pilot is going to make the ultimate sacrifice to his country and his emperor and he will be lost. So that's the story behind this diorama. Every time there is a air-to-air -air victory, a flag usually goes on the victorious aircraft's fuselage. In this case, it was a Japanese army flag, and in my little diorama, that flag goes on the position of the of the gunner on the B-29 that got this confirmed kill. So every time you watch a, a documentary or a movie and you see a um, kill marking 
German, Japanese, what have you, or victory marking if you prefer, or American, you know there is a story behind that that uh, victory marking. There's a story behind how that victory marking got on that plane. Somebody was shot down and possibly gave their life for their country. And I remember the first time I saw victory markings on a plane, I believe it was a P-47, it was in a book or, or in a movie. I think it was in a book, and I remember thinking, you know, I knew it was an American plane. I've always kind of known my airplanes, but it they were German markings, and I thought, why does this guy have these German flags? on his uh, airplane, and, and it wasn't until later I realized those were victory markings, or kill markings, if you will. And um, this guy had a lot of them. And I think, if I remember, I'm going to say that it was Gabby Gabreski. That's, that, that's who I think it was. But anyway, this, is, this was my build. I finished it up. I believe it was last week or two weeks ago, and... And it was my first attempt to do a lighted diorama. It looks a little better in person than it does on the camera. But I used LEDs, and uh, I'm going to do another diorama with LEDs. And when I do that one, I will make a couple of videos while I'm doing the, the LEDs because I know some of you guys out there may want to do something like this, and it's really not hard. There's just a few things that you have to observe, and um, but if it's really not that difficult. And um, there's if you have a have an idea that you want to do a diorama that's that's lighted, you know maybe this will help you, you know, push you off the mark. So that is it. That's my update, and um, I hope you enjoyed the build. And um, as always, like and subscribe. And as you leave the hangar deck, please be aware of the prop arcs. Be aware of the prop wash, the jet blast, and the jet intakes. And be careful. Keep your head on a swivel. And uh, come back and see us real soon. See you later. This is Tom signing off from the hangar deck.